get a lot of those uh, beautiful lights. Uh, ah, I try to stop it, but I'm not sure how. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's more the UC territory, definitely. So are you in are you in Bangkok or somewhere else? Oh yes, in Bangkok. It's a nice city. Yeah. Uh yeah, but it's traffic jam. <laughs> yeah, very much crowded. Yeah. It's very crowded, yes, and hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is this Vipka? Vipka. Hello? <laughs> is Vipka? Yeah, yeah, she she Coming yeah. Back from holiday. But she's muted, so let's unmute her. Are these are Vipka and Sen part of the the uh, uh, what do you call it? The media team? So social mafias. Yeah, oh, mafias. Vipka is yeah. Vipka is now on holiday. Yeah, <laughs> so Vipka is one of the couples, couple of the mafia. The <laughs> I feel only part-time mafia at the moment because mafia yeah. and chat is exploding and I'm only sometimes having a sneak peek. Yeah. Tell them, tell them what you saw. No. <laughs> Nothing at all? Okay. Yes, I saw a photo of someone who's very close at the moment. Oh, and, um, yeah, let's call him Pedro. Just uh, Already? Yes, yes, yes. This was but very fast. I won't fast. tell you, Pedro. It, it's, it, you know, you, it's so nice, this new technology. Yeah? So you gave me the, the picture, Pedro. Yeah. And I just, you know, drag and dropped it in the WhatsApp, and then it's with them. And then, you know, there was uh, a, a bang. 10 seconds separation, 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like Ooh. that. Yeah, I really like that. Vipka, that looks nice. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm more more um, speaking French these days than uh, in um, English. English. I just yeah. make you a bit jealous. See my yeah. daughter. See my favorite place in the shade. Yeah. yeah. Just like this Let's... is only because this is the compression zone, of course. Yeah, exactly. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Marseille. Oh, right. Oh, right. Down south. Is, uh, I'm Marseille. 11e arrondissement, c'est ça. Mmh, très bien. Voilà. <laughs> oui, très, très bien. Yes, I like it here. I yeah. like it here, I think. Food is nice, weather is nice. It's very, very, very hot. And uh, Jennifer but yes, is... Pedro has seen some sun as well. I yes, think. I did. I was for a few days down south in Algarve. And I'm mm. going back there also uh, next Saturday for another week. Because yeah. we, we, we barely have tourists now. Uh, and so the whole of Algarve, which is like prepared for five times more tourists than it has now, now they're on sale. So it's unbelievably cheap to, to rent a, a hotel or an apartment there right now. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, we're going down south for another week. My, my, brother, my brother's actually in Portugal at the moment. All right. I did Yeah. In, oh, um, that's the area where I was born, yeah. How were you? Yeah, yeah. Good. It's the lazy yeah. part of the country. <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, because it's oh. the heat. It's really, it's kind of like, it's the Spanish Andalusia that corresponds to yeah. the Portuguese yeah. Alentejo. Uh, and so it's the laid back part of the country. We take our time to do things. Like my, my uncles get, get up from bed very, very early, like half past four in the morning or 5 a.m to do work in the fields, in the, in the vineyards. Uh, and then my, they have like a seven hour day already by, by one o'clock. Uh, Calling it lazy, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. and then, but then- Because you can't help it. Yeah, and then visitors arrive for lunch and, and, and they say, this man looks already tired and it's lunchtime. <laughs> but they actually they've been working already for hard in, yeah. in, in the field, yeah. Let us say hello to Jennifer. Yes. To Jody, to Albina. Oh, I should uh, and open up my screen. Gretchen and Jose. Jose, and yes. How are you guys? Welcome to our chill out moment just before the session. And Good. Michael, Michael Thorley joining in also. And guys, this is Gret. Let me introduce you to Gretchen. She's new yeah. here. 
somebody I met last week and invited her. Hello, Hi. hello. <laughs> hello, Gretchen. Hi, Michael. And, hey, Michael. Hi, Hi everyone. Um, Hi, Michael. I haven't met you in person, but you seem to look different every time you're on here on screen. Well, How's I there? try my best. Wow, oh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Takes a lot of work. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, we're welcoming Mint and Jimena. Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness! Yes, there's some preparation. Oh. Yeah. Mint's taking up your... taxi driving. Mint in the car. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I am in a car. I'm yeah. in a movie. <laughs> today <laughs> not driving at the same time oh no i i don't know how to drive yet <laughs> thank you for thank you for your worries <laughs> hey, pedro you said that we're, we're getting uh, 84 people subscribed or i'm sorry how many people had signed up so we had uh, nearly 90 people 99 zeros Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, because it's summertime, uh, usually most of them forget about it. They're like, oh my goodness, it's wonderful out here on the beach. And so, and, and then by the end of the evening, they go like, there was, uh, was it Wednesday? Yeah, lost the Wednesday web jam again. And so that's what we're noticing now, this pattern of people do want to come, but suddenly okay. holidays get on the way. Uh, that's, that's very understandable, of course. But to all of you who have already joined in, welcome. And uh, so we are still yep. in our decompression zone, about to start our session with Yusi. Uh, and, and I think it will be a very interesting session with Yusi today. I was in this um, rehearsal, was it yesterday or two days ago? Because my, my head is going. Just yesterday, Peter. Yesterday, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had a ton of work since then. And indeed, it was a bit of a surprise session for me, and I was struggling with it, uh, which I believe is probably a good way to be, because you're, when you're struggling, you're probably learning, and if you're very comfortable, uh, then perhaps you're not really adding a lot into your head. So I do believe that Yussi, who is a facilitator from Finland, and I will not try to go into many details about Yussi, I'll let that for himself, uh, giving some space for our Finnish guests. To... You are a bit too early, Pedro. Yes, I'm already speaking too much, so <laughs> I will slow down. Will you slow down, and I then I can slow down. I can welcome those who are here for the first time. Yes. Gretchen, you are here for the first time. May I welcome you um, with all my heart? Uh, where did you arrive actually? Where did you land? We are a platform for experientialists, for co-creators, facilitators and change makers. So I do hope you will feel at home with us and our philosophy is failing forward. There is just no other way. I hope for you today it's not the first time that you are failing forward and I hope for you there are many more times to come. <laughs> So we hope you find answers for the questions you have and even better we want you to collect different questions and then share the answers that you have found. So share your dreams, your thoughts, your tears and your laughters, all of you. Good, then the logistics. Um, unmute your mic put on your camera so we can see you and be aware that we are recording the session so you are on YouTube. And um, for the agenda, uh, we will have UC as speaker and we will use uh, the breakout rooms for two times. And after the gem, we will go into the backstage to talk over what did happen I am sure that Pedro will use some words in the backstage, but let's let's give other people also a turn. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you see. So our special guest, you will guide us into the topic, create space for learning, how to do that. 
And yes, Pedro, yes, we all together with MIMB and Anufa were together. We shared the details, suggestions. I would say there was silence of the fin. And there were just very many cultural encounters leading up to a six word story I made up today. So I'm going to share that with you. Fin Mountain, Portuguese sun, laughter, echoes. You see, please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Before we begin, just to make sure uh, everyone will have your training equipment. It doesn't have to be one of these. It can be anything you can safely pick up with one hand and something you're already really familiar with. Yeah, we have a few people rushing to get something. That's OK. Uh, this like rushing to get something will actually give you some uh, extra training material for the first exercise. So before going into into any of the theory, uh, we'll begin with the first exercise related to emotions. So our emotions are always here with us, coming and going regardless of what we may think up here, they are always here. Um, and if we try to ignore them, uh, they will get stronger because it's an, some kind of important message from our body trying to tell us either that something's really good or something's really bad or something between these. And emotions are an important part of learning too. Uh, if we try to kind of ignore them and, and just go forward, we probably will not do so well as we do when we actually acknowledge that we are feeling something. And then continue. This For, for this, we have a really simple practice. All you need to do is be Settle in to this moment in your body and tune into what's already here. Whatever feelings, emotions, sensations you notice. Remember, whatever you're feeling is whatever you're already feeling. You're simply tuning in to what's already here. Next, um, name one to two emotions, feelings or sensations that are here now. And if you want, share them in the chat. Thank you. As, as expected, there's a whole range of emotions here with us. Uh, all of them are welcome. Um, okay, now, now that everybody's here, we can go into the, the main, main session. So, so we'll be talking about the, the, the human learning process a bit and then practicing things related to that. We, we are not here to learn anything specific. We are here to practice learning itself. Um, I'm going to have about 40 minutes of, of exercises related to the learning process. Um, 
Yeah. And this, this is something that is going on all the time. Uh, we, regardless of what we do, we are always learning something, either uh, something new or reinforcing an existing habit. habit. So we are, for whatever reason, interested about something. We pay attention to something and something is stored in our memory if we're really lucky. That's not really up to us what happens. And then we can kind of run the washing machine where we had Petro got confused yesterday <laughs> of, of, of reflection and, and uh, insight and kind of processing what we have paid attention to previously. And this happens in every single moment of our lives and continues on different time scales throughout our life. And the thing we're most focused on today is, is creating this space here where, where insight can manifest itself. But before, before we dive through, through the, the whole process, we'll begin here. Because um, like I, one like major difference from what I, how I speak about learning compared to, for example, to the, kind of the educational lit literature is that you notice that there's a distinct lack of motivation here. Not that it isn't there, but it's, I, I see motivation as an emergent property of, of being able to do something and wanting to do something. And you can't really force that, but the thing that you can do in any moment is get curious about whatever's going on, whether it's a person talking, talking to you or, um, or something you're listening to, um, or something you're seeing, or uh, an object that you are maybe already really familiar with. So we'll dive in, 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 into that. For this exercise, you will need the equipment that we asked you to bring, whatever you've brought, it's okay. Uh, you need something you can safely pick up with with your hand uh, and explore without hurting yourself. And like I said last week, uh, we're not going to be doing any time travel today because we don't need to. Uh, we are a continuation of ourselves and we can apply what we have done in the past to create our future in this moment. And for this exercise, we will bring our, let's say six months self here, or around that time, the first time when you were exposed to the type of thing you are holding now. So go bring that, that beginner's mind of seeing and touching this object for the first time to this moment. Um, but before we go into that, put your object down so that you let go of the, the current uh, like concepts and, and act actions related to that object. And, and really pick it up like it would be the first time ever using your senses to explore your object. We will continue this for a few minutes. So you have a lot of time to, to use different senses, uh, your eyes, um, your touch, uh, maybe the smell of the object. Or what does it sound like? You may notice your mind starting to go to places, like having ideas of how to how to explore or or what to do with the with the object or or just 
general confusion over like what's going on here. And then just return to the direct sensory experience. Feel, feel the weight of the object. You can see the texture. And if it's safe to do so, you can even taste it. And when your mind wanders, return to the direct sensory experience. At this point, you might be thinking, like, well, I've seen this so many times, like, there's everything that I, like, I've seen everything and heard everything and felt everything that there is to be felt about this object. Take a moment to find something new in your object, something you didn't notice before. And when your mind wanders, return to the direct sensory experience. You may also notice that our emotions are still here. Might be joy, might be confusion, frustration. Whatever's here is whatever you're already feeling. You can let it be. And when your mind wanders, return to the direct sensory experience. <laughs> okay. Uh. I think that's that's enough for now. <laughs> People are start, starting to get weird with their items. Um, <laughs> uh, next up, we're gonna take take a moment of of reflection of what what just happened and give you a chance to meet, meet your group in the breakout rooms. But before we go there. We'll take one minute of silence. Think about what did you learn? And what are you curious about? What did you learn? And what are you curious about? So what did you learn and what are you curious about? You can write this down for yourself if you want. We will be needing the answer to the second question later in this session. So what did you learn and what are you curious about? And you can share your answers in the breakout rooms.
Maybe just uh, have a breakout. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice. Okay, I've created breakout rooms. Uh, three participants in a room, per perhaps two, but I just start to open the rooms for you. And the instructions will be in the chat as well. Actually realized I didn't say the time frame, so I will write it. Two, yeah, yeah, two minutes per participant. Per okay. Broadcast. I switch on the time for you. Let me see. So we have Katja, Nicolina. Okay, Pedro, you were with Katja. Mm, so she never joined the session. The, the, the oh. So it was empty. Yeah, and so that's why I came back here, kind of like, is, is there anyone else? Okay. I, I'm in a room by myself. Was I bad? Yeah, same here. <laughs> So did you just join groups two by two? Because I thought we had agreed on three by three. Three persons in one breakout room. Oh, yeah. perhaps it was the three of us. Stephen got there. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I could see. Uh, yeah, I, I might have been in one of those. Rooms. It could be. And Bijou George is also still here. So. Okay. I can see Steve was in, uh, was by yourself. Mm -hmm. And Pedro was with Katja. So those were the only rooms that were not okay. built of three. And the rest is three. Okay. Should we go up to it? Should I join Pedro and Katja's room? She looks like she's she's somewhere else. Yeah. So Steve, let's join room number 12. Yeah. I think if you press on... Okay. Uh, I think I, I need somebody to put me there because it says yeah. right now I'm in breakout room seven if I join yeah. a room. Uh, okay, yeah. I, let me do that. So I'll jump back into 12. Okay, now I'm going to 12. Here I go. Yeah. And okay. So the first person is sharing for another 40 seconds. Yeah, I actually did get a clock for myself so I can actually see where we're oh, going. I have it here. No, I, I just have it here. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I took it for the, the overall duration, so. That's okay. I, I, uh, I have it. And I am writing. And I'm writing now the second person can. Minutes. And for people watching the rec recording, please don't skip these parts where we are asking people to talk with each other. You can pause the video and call a friend to have a little moment of reflection. What I realized was difficult for me to do is when your mind is working on different topics it's really too difficult to let your sense talk. So it's this, this rational thing here is, you know, broadcasting very loudly, even, so in my case, even telling my senses what to feel, what to hear, 
it's it's how do you say it? They are hijacking my senses. That's what happened yeah. with the yeah. With yeah, me. it's actually it's actually kind of they're not touching your senses. You're constantly having you. The signal is always there, and it's it's yeah. kind of like you're constantly feeling your clothes on your body and, and your tongue in your mouth and all that. It's always there, but most of the time your attention is somewhere else. Yeah. So so it's the kind of the, it's the attention that gets hij hijacked, but the signals yeah. are always there. And it's as yeah. with emotions, it's about tuning in to what's already there. And it, it can it can trigger another kind of emotion, uh, being frustrated. So no knowing what to do, being in this place, uh, exactly as you say, this is silicon. So it's not, you know, not a, a smooth surface, but there's no message coming through while observing and, and I don't know how to explain this, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <re> <laughs> troubled yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, this is like exactly what we're looking for with this, like really getting into something new that, that, that you don't normally do and then kind of wondering about that. Yeah. And there are times, okay, I will manage this first yeah. and then I'll say something else. So, okay, Hayden, let Hayden in. Hi, Hayden. Hello, Hayden. Hello. You're welcome to join. So uh, what I was going to share with you was, um, I, I, I lost the point that I wanted to say. Uh, ah, language. The older I get, the more I doubt, why do we have language? You know word words words mm. they seem to be limitless in number right or or well then mm. i must tell you that i speak in a number of, of of languages so all these words and i can feel they don't sometimes they don't cover the meaning so then i start doubting you know, why do we have language please can we get rid of that and just go back to our senses in the in the yeah. for, for you know thinking back of the times that we haven't figured out about language yet yeah it's because uh, uh, it's a little bit unclear where exactly because kind of the, the, like what is everything built up of but at, like you won't, wouldn't be able to function without this this basic mechanism that cre also creates language because if you're unable to like connect concepts to each other you wouldn't be able to pick this up like the sensory information <laughs> by itself isn't enough you need to have the concept of uh, something you can pick up it doesn't have to have to be, be the language but you need those concepts and then at some point it gets more abstract and you end up with language but still that you need need that mechanism to be able to function at all otherwise you, you make, would be able you make me actually <laughs> think you know, why do i use this tonight why, why do i use this tonight you know Pick up something else. I mean, that's actually, yeah, it's intentional that it's something you're familiar with. It's like, so it is, uh, use know, this to so eat. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's it's something that's not uh, not new to you. Yeah. This is too, too, too easy for your. Oh. <laughs> well, then I manage the time. That's, that's my job here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give them the message that I'm going to close the rooms. So yeah. that's another 60 seconds. Yeah. yeah, well, <clears throat> it's a good thing to realize that for for some, it perhaps is the first time to do this, and for some, it it's number x x x x time. Yeah. Um, well, making me think we have a lot to share with each other. In, in this community or with you know people outside yeah. yeah welcome back
Welcome back. Okay. If you are still coming back and then you can take the floor again, these two. Okay. I can see people are still coming. Yes, go ahead, DC. Yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, like one, one, one important thing that, that came up for me when we were discussing, discussing, discussing with the union is, is that the practices we're doing are not something like that you do once and then you got it. Especially with this curiosity practice, it's it's like it's the beginner's mind every single time. It's not really something you get like better at. It's easier to kind of start, but it's always the same practice. And with with um, all the other practices we're going to be doing, they they are also designed in a way that they are repeated over and over again, over time. We, we are practicing the, the kind of the meta skills of learning, not, not trying to learn a magic trick. Yeah. So now that got people at least curious about something, uh, we, we're gonna continue on the learning process with uh, kind of where learning actually begins. So going to paying attention. Uh, so uh, paying attention is something we like, constantly do, I, either consciously or unconsciously. It's, there's uh, we are always paying attention to something, um, even when we're actually unconscious. It's confusing. We're not aware if there's still something going on but it's a it's a skill we can train while, while we're awake we can practice paying attention to things and the practice is not about keeping your mind in, in a single place or emptying it from distraction distractions uh, the, the practice mm -hmm. is about returning to whatever you want to pay attention to even with like 50 or 100 years of practice, we still get distracted, our mind wanders, and then we still need to return to whatever we want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. The thing that we are practicing is, is returning gently so that it doesn't like um, awaken frustration or, or whatever, which is also very common, but it's more about acknowledging that, okay, hey, well, you went there. Let's let's get back to what where we're going right now. Because our mind does whatever our mind wants to, but we can okay. always we can always return. Yeah. So, so for this, we uh, I haven't come up with a with a new exercise. We'll use something that we humans have been doing for um, thousands of years. Oh, um, how many of you here have done yoga before? Okay, that's a pretty good good percentage. This will be more more familiar to to you and to everybody else. Welcome. Um, uh, for for this practice, I recommend standing up uh, if you, if you can do that comfortably. Uh, if if not, if there's any like medical reason or whatever space issues, you can you can sit down, but. If you can comfortably stand up, please stand up. You see, is it okay that we take two minutes for this exercise? Yep. So stand in with the uh, comfortable pose with your hip, uh, your feet at hip width. Uh, you can roll your shoulders back to to help them settle in. Um, for those of you who have who've done more yoga, might not 
recognize this depending on which school you follow, but this is the, the mountain pose for yin, yin yoga. So not the kind of the more active version where people spring into action from this pose, but the one where we really ground ourselves like a mountain. And all you need to do is stand here with your feet on the ground, your back straight but not tense just relaxed in the pose it natu naturally goes to and congratulations to everyone who's doing yoga for the first time because you have now completed <laughs> your first asana <laughs> so we we are gonna return to that pose we don't don't sit up yet we we are gonna continue the practice so that we'll be returning to the mountain uh, for the practice. So instead of playing with just our mind or breath, we'll use our whole body as the focus of attention. So you can feel your feet against the ground. Uh, if you can comfortably close your eyes, I recommend closing your eyes. That helps you focus inward or if you need it for balance, you can let your gaze soften. Five seconds, you see. Down. And when your mind wanders, return to the mouth. Really. Okay. You can sit down now. We'll continue. Uh, remember, remember the mountain. We can also return to it sitting down. So to keep 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 go going in, in the practice, we will be moving up, moving on to the next stop. But remember, whenever your mind wanders, you can return here. So. Next up is Colin's cat and memory. <laughs> the the, the uh, spotlight is not on yep. me right now. Yep. So we'll be going into <laughs> to memory. Memory next. Um, so once we pay attention to something, something we uh, sometimes store some of it. Most of the information we receive is is never stored or other than to the working memory for a moment to avoid like crashing into a wall or I don't know, falling down while we're walking and things like that. But in when it comes to like learning something, something new, uh, the the way we do do the, the storing is is uh, association. So it's the core mechanism of our memory is associating things with each other. Uh, starting from like understanding that this is something you can pick up to to the more abstract uh, language related to that. And that's the mechanism we can work with. Like instead of doing what's very commonly done, done as, as a learning strategy, it's kind of just like pouring information mm -hmm. on your head and then hoping something sticks. That can work, but it's unlikely to to help you help you really learn something. It's a lot easier to learn things when you can connect them to what you already know. Uh, and this goes to a, like a metabolical level that it, it actually takes less glucose to store stuff that's related to what you already know. And, and this basic mechanism is something we can practice. Mm -hmm. For this exercise, we need the thing you are curious about, or you can pick a new thing if your mind has wandered somewhere else and you feel like uh, using something else, but you need some kind of anchor on one side or your, your side there. And then I will be giving you the other thing from here. And the task in this practice is uh, creating or discovering an association between these two things. Mm 
the, the thing that you are curious about and the simple concept I will show you. So, so, so the, before yeah. you start, you see, shall we do three? Would that be enough? Yeah. 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 Okay. Go with three. So, how is this related to the thing you are curious about? It can be anything. It, it can, it can be a very direct connection between them or a color, a smell, how they sound when you, when you say them out loud. For this practice, it doesn't really matter whether the association makes any sense. We are just practicing connecting things. Repeat the same practice. So how is this connected to what you're curious about? Uh, use your intuition. There's no right answers to the question. It's whatever pops up. And the practice is more useful when, you, when it's not obvious, like you really get to like turn both concepts around in your head and find connections. Let's do one more. How is this connected to what you are curious about? Sorry, my camera is too good at seeing my face. <laughs> Hopefully you can see what it, what it is. I'm intentionally not saying out loud the the name of the object because like we discussed with Union earlier that language is not the same thing as the thing here. The association might be completely different based on your personal experience compared to the word I might use for this. Okay. So now that everyone's hopefully sufficiently confused, we're gonna <laughs> give our brains a chance to kind of run run the washing machine here and go into insight. Oh, perfect timing! The ice cream truck is here. Um, <laughs> So, oh, so we we all know uh, what having an insight feels like. That kind of the sudden aha moment with with the, the rush of energy and something that wasn't clear before is is suddenly clear. And this mechanism is largely out of our control, but we know a lot about what kind of conditions make it possible. So. The, the kind of the core of, of the, the mechanism is that we need to be not working on the thing that we kind of want to get an inside zone. And it's not something we can force. We can create the conditions and hope for the best. So for this exercise, uh, we will remove ourselves from the devices we're using right now. And do something uh, physical. It can be like, well, with the current schedule, we're walking around the block is maybe a little too much, but maybe some squats or a two minute plank or whatever is comfortable, but more slight, like moderately to, to light, slightly uh, strenuous to do. So some physical activity and focus on that physical activity. Not You don't need to do anything else. Okay, and let me help you. I'm going to give our participants one minute. Uh, we need two for this. Um, <laughs> okay, two, Good. not more than two, starting now. <laughs> yeah. So two minutes of physical activity, R remove yourself from the device that you are using. You don't have, we'll, be, we'll see you in two minutes.
What am I supposed to do, Ian? You should walk around. The way I say it is really not the right way to say it. <clears throat> I'll be here. Three seconds, two seconds, time. Okay. Ilona, you get a very personal uh, <laughs> coaching session. <laughs> Yeah, this practice works a lot better when you have at least five to 10 minutes. We're doing a slightly shorter version this time. But if you're watching this as a recording, take your time. Especially if you just skipped the quiet part and came here. Okay. Yes. Okay, so next, next up, mm -hmm. we'll go back to reflection. We had a short moment earlier in the breakout rooms. And you'll return to the same breakout room. Yeah. Uh, with the questions, uh, what, what did you learn? And what does learning mean to you? Okay. I'm going to start the breakout rooms again. And I will uh, give the time message in the broadcast. So I open all the rooms. I'm going to. Again, I'm going to get to be with somebody this time. Or are you putting me in my own room? <laughs> Uh, let me first broadcast the stuff okay. and again in the, in the chat, then I switch on the time and I'm going to look where you are. Where are you? Oh, I'm in 12. Yeah. Katja is there. Okay. I'll go hang out with Katja. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. So Gaurav, Gaurav is not in the room yet. Ah. And Tanya just joined us a few minutes ago. I am going to watch the time. I'm really curious to see afterwards, like, what did I spend extra time on? At some point, I, <laughs> you at have, some point, yeah, at this okay. moment, you have 12 minutes left. So you are a bit tight on the time. People will come back. And then you are already at your checking out. Yeah. 
yeah, we can move the Q and A. Yeah, uh, we can move that backstage. To... Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, I'll, we'll do a slightly longer check on to get a, okay. yeah. a chance for people to. But we'll return to the mountain for a moment. And okay. Get more of that there. So. Yeah, I'm going to broadcast to them that the second person can start within twenty seconds. So here, message goes. Yeah. Yeah. I had fun when I made the six word story of yesterday, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. <laughs> I'll give it to you uh, later on. Yeah, it is. If we continue our conversation on the language and then I connect it to the six words, you know, I think, oh, that's good. That's good. We find less words. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's actually something I use a lot as a, as a coach that I mm. ask people to put something into it. Like, a single sentence or one word or one or two words it's it's a very strong mechanism into getting into the actual thing that you are thinking about instead of kind of explaining different things mm. Mm. So mm. mechanism to to help also people clarify their own thinking yeah in dutch we call it a cauliflower effect a cauliflower effect when we talk it gets more and more talk more, oh, and more yeah, fight yeah. more and more <laughs> battle it grows and it grows. Where to chop oh, or chop? I was thinking what would I be the, here. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I have it here. I was thinking what, what would be the opposite of cauliflower, uh, like a, as a vegetable or something? <laughs> yeah. I guess some kind of root vegetable that would like really go deep into that specific thing. <laughs> that person yeah this is a, a lot more interesting in live because there i can actually see, see people's faces and like what kind of reactions they're having and yeah. no no this guy like, okay so everybody just leaving and no, no, like totally confused and all that but at least after the previous breakout room there were a lot of people smiling so oh, okay <laughs> it, this is just like my brain doing what it does like checks for all, all, the, all the possible things that could go wrong and then yeah. report, reporting on them yeah 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 you make you make me curious to uh, to the backstage now <laughs> Here it is. Another whole minute. It's a shame we didn't have five minutes for the inside exercise because I could have got actually gotten some ice cream. Like not from the truck, that, that would be too much. But from, from you have 47 seconds to get an ice cream out of your freezer and, and out of your, yeah, and then bring yeah. it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any in my fridge or freeze. Yeah. Mm. That was a good timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's another 20 seconds. I close it. Yeah. Guess I forgot the time a little bit. Okay. So they come back in 50 seconds.
So you have seven minutes left, let's say six, seven minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Welcome yeah. back, everybody. Do a like a five minute checkup. Hmm. Makes a good start. There are six persons in a general session. We'll wait for a little bit more. Nice. I think Hello, it's going to be union. when. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason on my screen, Anupa has union tie as your name. We are close because we are close. We're so close. We use the same name. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, welcome back, everybody. Okay, you see, please go ahead. Okay. So next, we're getting ready to close close our practice. We cultivated our curiosity, paid a bit of attention to our body, played with our memory gave our brain a chance to give us some insights and spend time reflecting on all this. And for our last exercise, we'll return to the mountain. This time you can sit down if you want, because you will be needing the keyboard soon. So sit in an alert, alert, but comfortable pose. With your back straight, you can roll your shoulders back to help them settle in too. Keep your hands on your knees or in your lap, whichever is more comfortable. You can feel your body sitting here. In this moment. And when your mind wanders, return to the mountain. You might notice a lot of things happening in your mind. And when that happens, you can smile because your brain is functioning normally and then return to the mountain. wanders, return to the mountain. If you feel that you're wa wavering, that your mountain by itself is not stable. It's hard to return. You can try leaning on the whole mountain range all around the world, from Mexico to Singapore, sitting here in this moment.
and to close this practice. One last time, let's tune into whatever emotions, feelings, sensations are in this moment. Remember, whatever you're feeling is whatever you're already feeling. We're simply tuning in to what's already here. And when you feel ready, and if you would like to, write one or two emotions or feelings or sensations that are here to the chat. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now, how to bring you guys back to my world? We're over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't leave. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. It is top of the hour. If you need to go, then we wish you well and go in peace. Um, if you want to stay for another 30 minutes, you are so welcome to be in our backstage. So thank you for now. Let me give you this slide and I hope we see you another time. And we also should give you, oh, sorry. We also <clears throat> want to announce our speaker of next week, our unique, special, <laughs> fun guy, Pedro. Beyond brain brainstorms, that will be his topic. He cooked it up today. <laughs> if you feel lost on the internet and you can't find the Wednesday Web Jam, just type in at Wednesday Web Jam. You can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and some other channels. We are working on that together with Mim, Anupa, Nachket, Jimena, Jenny, Wiebke, Lisa. Now it becomes hard. Who did I forget? Uh, Donna and myself. Okay, let's open up backstage. Open your mic. So, well, Pedro, I wonder what you have <laughs> felt now. You are one of the guys who did it twice. <laughs> exactly. So uh, backstage time and we can relax and just share our stories and feelings of how the whole thing went. <laughs> And of course, it went in many different ways, probably for different people. Uh, and I just want to share one or two stories from preparation yesterday. Uh, so first story, this kind of tells you uh, how much I understand about yoga. So we were just doing that mountain thing in the beginning. And 
it's a you know step up and I was like up and then uh, Yusi was saying you know, if you feel you are again your thoughts are going in different directions go back to the mountain and you know like three seconds or four or five seconds later I just like what mountain are we talking about? <laughs> and I go ahead, no, it was totally lost. <laughs> like, what are, where are we now? Because I, I have no clue <laughs> what are we doing at this precise moment. <laughs> it's a, it was certainly a fun moment. Um, we were also trying to... Um, Actually, Pedro, uh, do you me. know now? Yes, I learned yesterday. So that was uh, kind of like the mountain is this very first moment standing up. That's you. Let's feel yourself. And get, okay, okay. So gotcha. Uh, yeah, the other story was, uh, of course, we were talking about Yusi's style because he's very Finnish uh, in his way of speaking. Um, by the way, I need to find the name of the most fabulous comedian. Ah, you see, you surely know the, this comedian. Oh, Ismail Egola. Again? Ismail Egola. <laughs> exactly, Ismo. So if you look for Ismo videos online on YouTube, Ismo. So if you just Ismo. No, not now, people. Now you have to listen to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, then you can go and, and, and check out Ismo. Ismo is amazing. And again, that's that very, very typical is Finnish style, I think, is really cool. Uh, and I was wondering yesterday, would this more paused, uh, introspective, reflective style of learning, will that function online and will, will that work? Because uh, me being Latin, things were going very slow. And I needed more action. And so <laughs> we were like, OK, I'll take my time. I'll take my time. And I will let myself go through this learning experience at UC's speed and letting things happen uh, and so i had two shots in two consecutive days uh, it still feels slow but <laughs> that's me and so yes backstage here we are but i would love more than just giving up all my opinion because that's so so centric um or self-centered uh, i would definitely love to hear from someone else and please you're the ones we want to listen to I, oh, sorry, go you, Ayana. So I popped in about 15 minutes late, so I just kind of jumped into the first exercise, kind of um, ignorant of what the exercise was, but it was very good. I liked the, um, the last exercise because it was nice. This was my share tool. This is my, <laughs> I, I only use this brush to wash, I, I use it to wash many things, but my cat's dish only gets washed with this brush, nothing else. <laughs> and so her feeding dish. And so I, I kind of found that interesting. So when I was looking at the, um, the, the Macau and the uh, beach ball and the flower, I was really, I mean, it was very common. To, it was very easy for me to associate with the first two, the ball, the ball and the Macau because of the color. But the flower, it got me very much into form and I, I um, and kind of moving it to where I think this is an Ikea purchase, by the way. And so it was very much into feeling the um, organic sensualness of it and, and, and uh, 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 associating it with the flower. But in terms of Pedro, you know, in terms of uh, listening to UC speak, uh, to me, it was very Zen and it was very um, refreshing for me because I live in the US. I grew up in New York City and everything moves so quickly. I just said, this was very cool. So I'm good, <laughs> which is good. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we have all different uh, uh, rhythms. Uh, and so I think the, it's certainly good to, to, to enjoy a different, uh, different pace. Please, more feedback. I love this one from you, Ayana. Thank you. I, I've, I've met Juzi before. Yeah. Uh, the first time in 2018. And it was just you know, like, we happened to be in this event and we were volunteers. And th that day I was terrified being in Finland because I didn't know anybody except my friend who I was visiting and her husband. Um, so when I got there, I was like, oh, like I know I don't know anybody. And, uh, and, and I, you know, you, you wonder how that interaction will go. And then of course I was like, oh, it's Scandinavians and Latin Americans. So <laughs> I was even of course more terrified about it. Because I had had that experience before, 
and uh, and there was a moment in which of course it was like the lunchtime and 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 juicy he was like so friendly he was like yeah we, we can go and get something to eat and have lunch so we went together and i was like oh, like i hope i don't uh like i don't know what Peter would say like just faster for for him and, and finland finish fin, finland world uh but but i like that moment i appreciated a lot that that he generally was there you know uh with like just stranger who was just uh terrified and not knowing where exactly she was and and then when when i got back on to finland in 2019 uh, to the same event and volunteering i was just hit, uh, on my way to to this place and as i got closer uh i could the first person who i saw like from the window it was juicy and he was he waved at me and he smiled at me so I was really anxious again, again, like how it was going to be to see everybody, but just like that smile from Juicy that day from the party is like, ah, oh, you know, like, oh, I'm so happy to see you again. So it's, it's uh, this time we will not see each other, but uh, so this experience was like, as if I, if it was, we could have been there. So thank you, Juicy. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, there's this common misconception that that we're quiet because we're like, plotting against you or something like that. It's it's not that. It, it <laughs> <laughs> Those things are actually pretty nice. Yeah. So are my people I really, now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like to connect to Ayana because I fit the same. I'm I'm usually talking rather fast. You see, you took your time. I thought that was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I um I was actually really upset because I've had a day with my daughter here. I'm on holiday. The, the, um, all the environment is really different. And I found it really hard to connect. And I'm, I'm doing yoga practice regularly. I know what it means to ground yourself and, and, and connect to things that are really there. And I found it so hard. And so it's so nice to have you do that. And so nice to bring me back to the mountain and... Um, Yes, that, that's what I shared in the group as well, that I thought it's a, a different thing telling people to do it or to do it in your usual environment or to do it while your daughter's running inside and outside, your earplugs aren't working and she's crushing uh, chips at the same time. And I thought, God, that was the moment when you came in with the flower and the ball and I thought, no, I can't connect to that now. And I thought, well, maybe I can connect to, to, to the bag of chips or whatever. It doesn't matter, just let it be. And that was the main message and I love that. So I thank you for that. That was great. Let's say uh, thank you first that you see. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, uh, I wasn't on the call last week, but I did re-watch Colin's wonderful jam last week. And I'm sitting with a very pow powerful connection with presence and embodied presence and the moving between the forward, the past and the present. And I remember, I can't remember who said it, but it's basically somebody says, you can only change the future by thoughtfully looking and experiencing the present because the future of course doesn't exist. So I also noticed when we were speaking, we started talking about the stereotypes of being Latin or being Finnish which I noticed, if I'm really honest, I noticed a real sadness and a disappointment in that because it suggests that we're all the same, whereas we're not. So if we were to embody our nationality and our culture, what would that look like to other people and how could we then connect physically? So if I choose you, Pedro, when eventually I see you, I'd like to know what it feels like for you to be Latin and you'll see to feel like to be Finnish yeah. And if I can embody that, how does that bring me more into your experience of the world and what is present, what is future, which is past? So I was beautiful exercises, you'll see, uh, and also Colin for last week. And so I'm really processing and somatically trying to connect and reflect on that. Yeah. So all things are presented however they come across, but the fact that they went from one week to another, I think is no mm. coincidence. Yeah, I, I think about the Myers-Briggs test, and uh, I know that in 
there's a percentage of introverts in England that goes around 70 or 75%, according to those tests. And in the US, it's the other way around. It's extroverts are about 70 or 75%. And, and saying this because, yeah, we end up having not, not all being the same in a given culture, but of course, there's all these little traits of personality or ways of behaving that are very cultural. Uh, in ways of perhaps interacting with others that we learn from each other. And when we move into a different nation, it becomes very, it works in a different way. I certainly feel that when going into Russia, uh, they're, they're very warm people actually, but you, you need to give them some time uh, to, to feel uh, comfortable uh, with being warm. Uh, and, and so that's quite, uh, but we Portuguese or perhaps Spanish or Italian, we tend to definitely be warm immediately and we don't really, it's just the way we are mm. uh, culturally, I guess. Uh, so I certainly, I mean, we, I wouldn't say that, of course, we not the whole nation does behave in the same way, fortunately for, for, for us. <laughs> but, but I certainly, I guess there's certainly some uh, cultural notes uh, that you, you can feel. Yeah. And that's, actually an interesting thing about that like the, this this whole thing actually like originally came from like my own mindfulness practice and really kind of studying what it is to be human both as an experience and in theory and i wasn't really looking for learning it just kind of came up but the main message uh, relates to this discussion is that we are first and foremost human and there's more same in us than different. Mm. And at the same time, we are all completely unique. So everything that we learn is based on everything we've experienced so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. So every little interac interaction, our, our genes, that whatever happened during the past 4 billion years to our genes and, and all that, yeah. it's, it's, it's this continuation of, of things. And every single like experience that a human goes through is unique because it's all based on what you with your specific set of genes and all that yeah. have experienced in what kind of environment and at the same time there's this deep core of humanity and learning that is the same yeah and i guess that's also makes we are so unique makes also uh, empathy be so difficult to achieve uh, i mean empathy is always very superficial in a way because uh but I can't really see the eyes, the world through Yussi's eyes or through Michael's eyes or Pimena's eyes because I didn't live your lives. Uh, so I didn't suffer what you suffered. I didn't enjoy what you enjoyed. And so uh, that I, my personality is very different uh, for that, of course. So we can only have this approximation in terms of empathy, uh, but this uniqueness that we all have, that's, I think that's really fascinating. Uh, I love discovering other people uh, over a long evening of, around a glass of good wine, I guess, and a good conversation. I think that comes back to, um, I think you see what you allude to is that the, the commonality of us being human and tapping into those experiences that we share just from that space. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. uh, humanity then comes to play because I think we all have a built-in humanity. Mm -hmm. And then as we can come and deal with that, and I'm looking at Jimena, like, I mean, I grew up also Latinx, but I grew up Caribeña. I grew up Puerto Rican, you know, and, but yet one of my favorite people, in fact, I have such a huge crush on Vicente Fernandez. You know, I love Vicente Fernandez, who's what, I mean, he's, he's, he's a big star from Mexico and he's, you know, he's, his, his music is ranchera or considered ranchera and I just love ranchera music the mariachi you know the whole thing and, and my friends here who are Mexicano you know they were like what's up with that <laughs> and I'm like I just love ranchera music and it it resonates with me so and I love Vicente so that's so so I'm finding that even though my my Latin X experience may be different there's still these commonalities you know and so I just say I just love ranchera up good <laughs> so we can <could>, that uh, yeah <laughs> you see can i ask you one question so what is learning for you 
<laughs> well, it, it's uh, you you asked the wrong question because that's adding stuff that didn't exist before to something. Uh, but what does it mean? <laughs> uh, is for, for for me, it's uh, and nothing less than the purpose of life, like not not my life, but life in general. Like there's kind of the the universe would work just fine without life in it. But if there is life, the only like reasonable purpose for it is to be better than the universe would be without it. So that's kind of our mission. Be better. I made this question about 10 minutes too soon because this would be the perfect way to suddenly finish. And we would say, and on that note, with the meaning of life, we finish today's session. No, that's usually where I begin. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing to say. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to, to hear comments on this fabulous uh, sentence from, from you. So the meaning of life, uh, learning, that's what provides meaning to, to life. Yeah. I would like to evolve. go back to another topic, to, to the one of culture. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pedro. Yeah. Can we wait for that? <laughs> I think curiosity, curiosity yeah. to me. I mean, the, the whole idea is that if you're not curious, mm -hmm. you, we don't, if we're not curious and we can't find our curiosity, how do we evolve? You know, how do we expand and open? And how do we get to, 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 to open up our learning, you know, experiences? So this was a very good uh, session. Thank you, UC. Thank you, Wednesday Web Jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could share. Um, maybe I could share something. So I'm sitting in the dark in my garden here. Um, <laughs> last week there was a, a, a part of the process which we kind of took out, but it was about this idea of learning. Um, Plato wrote a play called uh, Menor, and it's a dialogue between Socrates and his protege Menor. And in the play, Menor asks Socrates, he says, um, "Master, what is what is learning? What is virtue? Can virtue be learned?" And Socrates replies by saying. Uh, it cannot be learned. It can only be remembered. There is no such thing as learning, only remembrance. And the, the way to access the remembering of a universal sort of body of knowledge is by a deep um, acknowledgement and experience of your own ignorance that you do not know. And that's where from Socrates it says, why is this she who does not, why is this she who knows she does not know? And the Taoists have a similar one saying, he who knows does not know, he who doesn't know knows. Oh. And so it's just this kind of philosophical playing with this idea of what learning is, that it's not nothing that we learn, but we remember that which we are inherently already a part of, and that is carried through our, I guess, our genes and our ancestry and, and you know, all different forms and, and formats. <laughs> That's what I loved about the spoon. Um, this is something so so normal that we have this spoon and and you, you stop being alive once you stop discovering the spoon anew because you have to do it you have otherwise I, I don't know I, I used to work in an environment that was years ago and um, learning was more like oh you have time to do that and um, that was horrible the attitude was horrible because I think once you stop discovering and once you stop being curious and you mm. can't acknowledge that you don't know anything, then, then um, I don't know, everything goes gray. It's like you can only, if, and, and even more if you have to do repetitive tasks, you have to be curious, otherwise you'd just die. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if anybody um, is trying to unlearn something or like unwind something in themselves or, or their mm. lives. There's some just habits or like patterns of thinking that I'm trying to change, like unlearn. Yeah. I'm curious if anybody else has uh, had any type of experience or, you know, tackling that in some way. Yeah. Can you share yours with us? What are you trying to unlearn? Sure. Um, yeah, and this, there's a long list. How long, how long do you have? <laughs> uh, well, one thing that I um, that I struggle with is I, I really like learning and studying, but I, I struggle with reading, like that visual processing. I must have some kind of learning disability, but it, it just 
it takes a lot of concentration for me to read. Like it takes me a long time. Um, and part of what, you know, I'm trying to unlearn is sort of like unwind that identity or that thought pattern and see if I can find a way to enjoy reading again without, I don't know, just feeling like, um, is this task or, uh, I don't know. So I consume a lot of material, like books or stuff on audio, but I, I, I just really miss sitting down with a book and reading. Um, anyway, but but it's, it's something that, you know, I struggle with. Good. Who else is unlearning something, trying to, to get a new habit, a new way of doing things or new ways of learning? Well, I'm trying not to let the F-bomb flow 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 out of my mouth every time I see Donald Trump. I, it, it, it becomes so automatic. I like, you know, I haven't sworn in many years. And as soon as he appears, I just flow out with all this stuff. And so I'm trying to do my best to dedicate myself to not let that happen and try to see something positive in this. I, <laughs> I, I special see talent I'm that really, out really of you, serious though. about this. I'm yeah. very serious. Yeah. I could okay. see Mark now, Mark going like, my girl, that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, re related to that, I, I, Ayana, I, um, I think I may have shared this with some other people. I'm sure certain some of the people that, that I work with, but mm. I'm trying not to personalize things, right? And I find it really, really hard, especially in in the in what you know what you're talking about, the political sphere. But it's it's a step for me um, to open myself up <clears throat> to being more empathetic and trying to get deeper and and understanding other people, right? Um, it's easy to call people names. It's easy to, you know, say that person's an idiot or that the people that are on the other, other end of the political spectrum from you are, are just stupid. Um, but that's, it's too easy, right? And, and I'm really trying to decouple, um, just like not do that. And it's hard. It's especially hard when you're talking about somebody like you mentioned, the he who shall not be named. Um, the, 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 uh, but, but it's, you know, that's something I'm working on trying to change is like, stop myself from calling people names from even thinking about them in labels. Um, and I, you know, going back to your Wednesday web jam, I think that's a big step in, in helping us open up to seeing the world through other people's eyes. And, but it's, it's really, really, really hard, especially with people, you know, um, your friends, your relationships. Um, right. I have a dialogue that goes on in my head with very specific people and I'm trying to cut it off and it's bloody hard. Well, I think you see going think, to the mountain oh. exercise was, I'm gonna go to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the mountain. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually have another thing related to this, like, uh, like not doing something or unlearning things is not really possible. Unlearning as a, as a concept is, is useful, but you can't technically do it. Uh, so everything, we, as I said before, everything we've experienced so far is already here. We've stored, well, some of it, not, not, of course, we don't remember everything we've ever seen, but anyway, that experience is already there. And the same way you can like not think about the watermelon riding the white elephant when you think about it or someone says it <laughs> the same way you cannot like not do something like if you think the the, the 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 thought of not something requires for you to actually activate that something which reinforces that memory so in order to not, not do something you actually have to do something else instead of not doing the thing so uh, especially with habits you need to use the tr trigger which might be a picture of a person, for example, or hearing their words or to seeing their tweet, whatever. And instead of kind of not reacting to that, you need to replace it with something else. Or in this case, just not go anywhere where you can get <laughs> exposed to that. Uh, <laughs> but that applies to everything that you, you need to 
right, do something else, do something new, not not do something. That's a lot easier. Yeah, but it's very. Really, oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, I think same because it's like um, if you if you've learned something and you repeat it and your experience matches the first one or or connects to that, what? Well, um, it's really what you had on your sheet of paper. And then you try to to unlearn in quotation marks that it's activating the same connection again. And it's like um, going away from the motorway, which is in your brain and trying to, to find a new path. And this needs to be enforced before it can be active. So the only thing is really to be attentive and to, to have a good look at things if it's still the same thing. And if you really mean that and uh, Mark, if you're talking about people, um, just watch them if it's really the same thing. And it's um, if they say it the same way, or if um, I don't know the one who should not be named, um, it's really worth listening. Maybe just find another strategy. And it's um, if you call it unlearning, it's it, maybe it's unlearning, but maybe it's just um, moving on and not. Uh, staying with your old perceptions and your old experiences, but it's really, really hard. Yeah, it's changing my point of view, right? Because the only way that we're like in our country in the United States, and it's probably not just in the United States, we've got to fight against some pretty powerful forces to bring people together into a common space. And the only way to do that is to try to get closer to other people's points of view. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them. It just means you have to see things a little bit more through their perspective. And I think that's what I'm trying to do is see how I can, you know, try to see things a little bit from other people's perspective, which will change my perception of them. And then I don't put labels on them. You know, it's demonizing people. So it's not good. Anyway. Mark, it, it makes me think of the video that we show in our, our classes about uh, neural pathways and learning, learning how to ride a, a backward bicycle. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this video yep. where someone has to learn how to steer a bicycle where if you turn the handlebars this way, the wheel yep. goes the opposite way. And yep. after only practicing that for a long time, do you actually forget how to ride a bicycle the original way? So it's like a cognitive behavior therapy, right? Teaching yourself to choose path B instead of path A when you have a, a, a thought about something. Right. It's challenging. Good point. Okay, everybody. It seems as if Steve gave us an, uh, an, an exercise, an assignment, a thing to do after this session because we are heading towards ending this backstage. I want to show you again next week. It will be Pedro's turn. And um, uh, it's so very welcome to come back to this platform. Um, I am going to say goodbye to you all now. And, and, and it's our 20th session. Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> but just remember that it's the 20th. Because it was on the 19th. It was the 19th. Am I getting a cake? Because uh, if it's session number 20, I want a cake. We don't think so, Pedro. Not yet. <laughs> we'll see what we can cook up for him. Yeah. Okay. Reminded. See you guys next Wednesday. <laughs> Have a good one. Everybody. Thank you very see you much. See you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Michael. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.